Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. How many of you have been blessed so? Hallelujah. Phenomenal, powerful, powerful steering by God's servant, Pastor Isaac. Let's give him a big, big God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. I came in just when he was talking about hunger. And when I heard it, it was music to my ears. I said, this is good. This is the kind of thing that God's people need to hear. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. One more time, let's bless the Lord for his life. Pastor, thank you and your dear wife for this opportunity. And I trust that God will do us good in Jesus' name. Father, help us yet again, even by your spirit. The Bible says they go from strength to strength, as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Speak to our hearts and cause us to arise, even by your word. And to Jesus be all the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. The Bible essentially contains three things. Um, we're discussing the covenant and the Bible essentially contains three things. Number one, the Bible contains promises. Number two, the Bible contains principles. Number three, the Bible contains prophecies. So every time you open up the bible you are having an encounter with these three dimensions one principles number two or promises two principles and number three prophecies the reason we need to understand this is because the word of god is the basis for his dealing with men please listen carefully god limited his dealing with men to the jurisdiction that the word of God provides that means outside of the word of God there is no other platform are we together now for relating with man anything God is going to do to with and for man must be within the jurisdiction that scripture allows so it is important for every believer to understand the word of God as the basis for engaging the covenant as the basis for engaging that which makes for an excelling life so the bible essentially contains promises contains principles and contains prophecies now for most believers like i did say yesterday we took our time to explain the fact that god is faithful and true meaning that he is dependable verifiable reliable but as mighty and powerful as God is there are many believers who may never have represented within their lives the goodness of God the power of God and the grace of God and the reason for that is that most people do not know how to engage the Word of God for their profiting the Bible tells us that scripture is profitable profitable but just because it is profitable does not mean that reality will be captured in your life hallelujah and unfortunately most believers have not been taught the responsibility dimension of our faith work and so we leave everything all up to God and then we end up in disappointment wondering whether the Word of God works or not so please walk with me for a few minutes as we explore by the Spirit and then we have the time to pray how to engage the word of God the first key that is required for any believer who wants to see the covenant the speakings of God work in your life the first requirement is knowledge please write it down knowledge is a non-negotiable requirement in this kingdom God structured the administration of eternal life such that 
outside of knowledge you cannot walk in the reality of it please understand that this is a kingdom that operates by light this is a kingdom that operates by knowledge beyond desire it takes knowledge to engage the things of the spirit to engage the word of god to engage the covenant for your profiting someone say knowledge hallelujah the bible says in ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 ephesians 1 and verse 3 it says blessed be god and father of our lord jesus christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ look at that statement very carefully paul is mentoring the church in ephesus and he's telling them that god had blessed us with all spiritual blessings not some all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in christ hallelujah in first corinthians chapter 2 still teaching the church in corinth when you read from verse 7 down to verse 12 but verse 12 is the verse of emphasis he says speaking about the ministry of the holy spirit paul began to teach about the hidden wisdom of god he says but now verse 12 he says but we speak go to verse 12 he says we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god to what end that we may know the things that are freely given to us of god that means one of the principal assignments of the holy spirit in the life of the believer is to sponsor knowledge and understanding an understanding of the things that have been freely given to us because outside of knowledge there is no dominion please listen carefully outside of knowledge there is no dominion dominion is knowledge dependent results are knowledge dependent in the kingdom hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet speaking by the spirit was communicating a deep desire in the heart of god he said my people perish they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge not for the existence of satan for the lack of knowledge for the lack of knowledge for the lack of knowledge ephesians 4 18 having their understanding darkened the bible says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts ignorance is a terrible cancer of destiny it can destroy men it can impede your rising galatians chapter 2 and verse 2 i went up by revelation it takes more than desire to go up i went up by revelation i scaled heights in destiny by revelation i excelled in ministry by light knowledge is so profound in colossians chapter 1 and verse 9 paul was praying a prayer for the church in Colossae. colossians 1 9 he says for this cause we also since the day we heard of you of you do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding say knowledge hallelujah yes in as much as the life we have received is a life of infinite possibilities we know this because jesus said i am come that ye may have life john 10 10 and that you have it more abundantly but that the administration of the life of god power and excellence and victory and results in this kingdom is knowledge dependent and when it has to do with knowledge there are two kinds of knowledge that are necessary for engaging the word and engaging the covenant number one very quickly still under the first point is the knowledge of the promises the knowledge of the promises the knowledge of the provisions 
that have been afforded the believer as a result of that which Christ has done. It is important. The Bible simply calls it exceeding great and precious promises. Hallelujah. Are we together? It says, according as this divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue it says whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so it takes knowledge many believers pastor are desirous of the things of God but we continue to wallow in ignorance and ignorance is the strengthener of evil every time there is ignorance around the life of a believer in fact there is a cadre of demonic spirits called rulers of darkness that means their dominion comes in everywhere light is absent are we together say knowledge in this kingdom it takes knowledge to rise in this kingdom it takes knowledge to excel the knowledge of the promises of god please look up you will never be able to walk in victory if you are unaware of the provisions that have been made available for you for instance genesis chapter 12 when you read from um verse 2 and 3 the bible says speaking to abraham now that promise was not just to abraham it started with abraham but you know it was to abraham and his seed am i right on that that seed being jesus christ and galatians 3 29 says if ye be christ's then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise so we become bona fide beneficiaries of everything that was said to abraham and to jesus and he said to him i will bless them that bless you and him that cursed you i will curse he says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed the knowledge of the promises of god what else did God say about you? That I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. What else did God say about you? That a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side. But none will hurt you. With your eyes will you see and behold the reward of the wicked. What else did he say about you? That if you are planted in the house of the Lord, you will flourish in the courts of our God. That in old age you will be fat and flourishing. What else did he say about you, preacher, or a leader? Genesis 17 and verse 6, that I will make you exceeding fruitful. So fruitfulness is your heritage. It says, I will make nations of you and kings will come out of your loins. That means there is no weakness with you. What else did he say about you? Psalm 112, blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. It said, his seed shall be mighty upon earth, that the generation of the upright shall be blessed, wealth and rich shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever the knowledge of the promises the knowledge God's commitment towards you are we together that you will call on one person and a nation will gather what else did he say about you I'm reminding you that the Sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night is that in your Bible what did he say about you? I have loved you with an everlasting love and with my loving kindness have I drawn you. Do you believe this? The knowledge of the promises of God. As simple and as basic as this sounds, there are many believers who continue to empower defeat in their lives because of the bankruptcy. We know many other things except the truth of scripture. We know what society is saying. Are we together? We know the price rates increasing. We know the current rate of things and that is wonderful. But most people invest their time learning the things that are, are completely unnecessary for your excelling in life Paul was speaking and he said there is as it were many voices and he said none of them is without signification that means there are many
many things clamoring for your attention please listen to me failure has a voice it wants to speak to you defeat has a voice it wants to speak to you satan has a voice he wants to speak to you he came to eve and she gave him attention everything has a voice it wants to speak yesterday has a voice it wants to speak to you it is your assignment to take responsibility as the believer to know that to engage the covenant to engage the word of god i need to discipline myself it says and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation are we together now the knowledge of the promises of god Jesus at age 12 went to the temple even though he was the word incarnate he began to learn scriptures in Matthew chapter 4 when Satan came to tempt him Jesus did not say I felt Jesus did not say I wished he said it is written you need to know what is written in Luke chapter 4 reading from verse 16 down to 18 the Bible says he entered the temple as his custom was and they gave him the scroll of Isaiah to read and he began to read the messianic prophecy he said the spirit of the lord is upon me speaking about himself for he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to preach liberty to them that are bound and so on and so forth and he stopped the bible says he closed the book and the eyes of all were fastened to him and he said this scripture this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears hallelujah listen if you do not have sufficient knowledge of that which God has done, do you know there are many people, even legally speaking, who can be cheated because they do not know the terms of a contract? Am I right on that? Yes. Every time you are given an employment or every time you do business, the assignment of a lawyer is to intelligently prepare the contract and if it's a lawyer that is knowledgeable he would design that contract in such a way that it always protects you am i right on that yes so that everybody who wants to bully you out of that property or out of that business you do not need to fight physically with them there is a system that uses the the legal contracts to administer justice or otherwise if you are caught fighting physically whether you are right or wrong most likely you will all be headed to the police station am i right on that but when you use the legal document and say i am the original occupant of this land in this instance you can present your document it is the assignment of the judge to scan through what you, and find where your your advantage is secured most believers approach life satan and destiny emotionally trouble leave me alone that's not how trouble goes satan leave me alone that's not how he goes there must be a basis for your spiritual communication when you say be healed based on what when you say i will not die based on what when you say i will not be a failure based on what there has to be a basis for your confidence it is the reason why we make faith declarations or bold declarations that are not based on understanding and then it ends up bringing disappointment is someone learning already so knowledge is the first key but then I said there are two dimensions one is the knowledge of the promises and listen to me ladies and gentlemen the knowledge of the promises that have been afforded the believer in Christ is not a gift it takes labor and discipline to bring to your consciousness the awareness of all that has been made available for you in Christ. You will need to discipline yourself to labor in the word, to learn the ways of God, to discipline yourself to learn the ways of God, to discipline yourself to learn the ways of God. Hallelujah. He showed his ways to Moses, but to the nation of Israel, he showed his acts. There's someone here, do you know what God has said concerning your finances? Do you know what God has said concerning your children? Do you know what God has said concerning your health? Before any negative statement arrives at your destiny, make sure you are fortified by the word. Remember, we agreed yesterday that he is faithful and true. So there is no fear believing the word. But you cannot even believe what you do not know. Knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge knowledge it is written jesus said 
it is written again Jesus said it is written the third time and Satan left him it is written so number one the knowledge of the promises that have been made available to you in Christ number two which is a very important aspect of that knowledge I hope I've not lost you that there are three dimensions to two dimensions to knowledge first is the knowledge of the promises second is the knowledge of the conditions attached to activate the promises please listen this is where many believers miss it the knowledge of the promises that have been made available to the believer in Christ then number two the knowledge of the conditions your knowledge is not complete if you do not know the participatory role that you have to play in committing God to perform for you most believers know what God has said he would do but they do not know under what condition he made that statement for instance when the Bible says you shall be the head and not the tail that is what we know but there was a condition upon which that statement will work Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass it says if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I've commanded you this day that this blessing shall come upon you and shall overtake you so we isolate promises independent of the awareness of the conditions connected to them hallelujah there are times where you watch a beautiful advert on tv and after rejoicing thinking the advert is too good to be true you will see a small statement written there terms and conditions apply am i right on that in other words make sure you have thorough knowledge before you come rejoicing because while that is a beautiful advert and that statement is not a lie there are terms and conditions that apply hmm. hallelujah for instance just saying i shall not die is a risk there is a condition attached to not dying but live and declare the works of the lord are we together honor your father and your mother he says so that you shall be long and it shall be well with you you can't just shout and say it must be well with me based on what listen the knowledge of the conditions that are connected to the promise is what activates the promise in your life are we together yes oh my god shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus that's not what the bible says that was a prayer coming from someone who had received gifts of honor and benevolence from a faithful people and he was speaking to them that prayer is not supposed to be a confession it's a prophetic blessing from someone who gave to a prophet a man of god and he was releasing it. he said my god shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus it was a blessing to the Macedonian church because they gave of themselves and they gave of their substance is someone learning now yes so we have a lot of claiming of promises without the responsibility component that most believers have not paid attention to examine the various conditions connected to the performance of the word you need knowledge everybody say knowledge one more time say knowledge knowledge of the promises that are in Christ given to the believer and then knowledge of the conditions that should make those promises work it is amazing that two believers the Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all but two believers can attempt to engage the word to perform in their lives one person will receive an extraordinary result and the other person will be left out as though God intentionally decided to not make him experience the word and the difference I am telling you largely is that one person may be aware of what God has said and even though knowing that God is faithful and true he's not able to engage the word for his profiting because he does not know the participatory role listen salvation is the cheapest and the easiest thing given to the believer in Christ but even at that it comes at the instance of your believing and your confessing 
Am I right on that? As simple and cheap and free as salvation is, there are people going to hell today because the condition for salvation to work in your life is not just that Jesus died. That has already happened, but that you must receive, believe that report. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, when you read from verse 9 and 10, that if you confess with your heart the Lord Jesus, the, your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So an individual can stand close to this precious gift and still go to hell. That does not negate the fact that Jesus died and rose again. That does not negate the fact that God loves you. There are people suffering all over the world and yet the epitome of love is still seated on his throne. And you'll be wondering, is God not watching these people? Is God not watching the children die? Is God not watching the governments of nations plunge their people down? The reason is because there is always something men must do that makes good the word of God in their lives. If you understand Understand this you will begin to take responsibility over your destiny and walk in partnership with the Word of God it is never always all up to God and it is never always all up to you it is called koinonia the participation between God and you the spirit and the bride says come it is not the spirit alone it is not the bride alone the spirit and the bride say come so if God says come there must be a bride on earth that can echo that come if god says be healed can you imagine that someone can be sick for instance and you watch a miracle happen the day the person got healed was not the day the healing came the healing was always there waiting for the condition that activates it to be released are we together now the Bible says a man was lying at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. It was never in his life that it would take 38 years for him to be healed. Every year was a chance for him to be healed. But he did not fulfill the condition connected. The water always was there. The water did not dry up and come back. No, the angel came once a year according to the rendition there in John 5. And the Bible says the first person, that was a condition. No biases. The name of anyone, no, no one was mentioned there. Whoever was the first person to jump in. And the man laid there for 38 years because he could not fulfill the condition. Other people jumped in and they were healed. They were testimonies. The man had knowledge that this is where my healing lies. But the knowledge of the condition, you see that? Apostle, I know that one day God will lift me. I know that one day it will go better. You hear people say very, very sincere statements that will end people consistently in misery and pain and disappointment. I know one day ministry will rise. I know one day I'll have financial resources. You just be watching. No, sir. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It takes your understanding the condition, the condition, the condition. Is someone learning so knowledge knowledge of the promises knowledge of the conditions number two now faith to engage the promises to deliver faith so I said that the requirements to engage the word for your profiting is one knowledge all that we said until now is just buttressing on knowledge number two now is faith to engage the promises to deliver faith what is faith faith in one word I said yesterday and I'll repeat again is obedience in one word faith is obedience no matter what you do that you call faith if it does not translate to your obeying God and obeying scripture it will not commit God to perform let me show you two scriptures is God helping anyone Isaiah 1 19 please let's read it together when we have it projected Isaiah 1 19 ready one to read if ye be willing and obedient uh-huh ye shall eat the good of the land 
if ye be willing and obedient ye shall eat the good of the land it is not your obedience or your willingness that puts good in the land there is already good in the land but your portion gets to you at the instance of your willingness and your obedience are we together there is favor everywhere there is profit in everywhere but your portion arrives at your destination at the instance of your obedience second scripture job 36 11 job 36 11 hallelujah powerful scripture ready let's read together one to read if they obey and serve him they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure one more time please if they obey and serve him they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure two words that people crave for so desperately and yet do not care about the conditions that make it happen people crave for prosperity people crave for pleasure and yet they run away from anything that 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 demands obedience hallelujah obedience obedience there are conditions connected to every manifestation of the promises of God apostle I want to become a very powerful man of God do you know what the Bible puts because you see it is not that God decided to call someone and anoint the person and then leave another person there are conditions what are the conditions Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually 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 to prayer and to the ministry of the word hallelujah to prayer and to the ministry of the word Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine the Bible says and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer so if you are not willing and able to engage this the Bible says and as they prayed and worshiped the Holy Ghost said to them separate me Paul and Barnabas most people do not want to engage I thank my God Paul says I pray in tongues more than ye all most people will not invest in prayer for instance they will not invest in the study of the word are we together the level of consecration and discipline consecration and discipline you cannot carry the anointing without an understanding of consecration there are two dimensions to consecration let me quickly touch on it consecration has two dimensions number one is abstinence from number two is devotion unto most people only know the abstinence part consecration i repeat is abstinence from and then devotion to if you abstain from and you are not devoted to you are not consecrated abstinence from devotion unto are we together so you are abstaining from all appearance of evil well done but what are you devoted to It says this one thing I do this how many things one thing Martha Martha you are worried and upset about many things it says but one thing is needful there are conditions apostle I want to prosper financially I know God desires to prosper me uh-huh so what knowledge do you have do you understand the conditions that are connected to it for instance the Bible says there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty the Bible now says listen carefully that a diligent hand shall be made fat am I right on that yes the Bible says as the gift of a man shall make room for him and bring him before great men these are all the components pieced together that command true biblical prosperity and most people will know it may even know the conditions but the faith to engage it consistently is not there hallelujah let the redeemed of the lord say so when last did you say so when last did you say so 
if the redeemed of the Lord say so, that means everything that redemption brought, they should also say it. Let the healed of the Lord say so. Let the lifted of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the anointed of the Lord say so. Even Jesus himself said, before your father Abraham was, I am. He didn't keep quiet about it. Destroy this temple and I will build it again after three days. Are we together? Say so. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? Say so. Say unto the righteous, it shall be well with them. Therefore I decree and declare over my life that it is well with me. It is well with me. When men say there is a casting down, for me I declare that there is a lifting up. This is not just some Pentecostal talk. It is how the kingdom operates. Hallelujah. While we look not at the things that are seen, the Bible says, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. That means anything I see that is inconsistent with the word of God, it is my assignment to work in partnership with the word of God to begin to sponsor change and conversion until it reflects that which God has said. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ faith most people have not obtained the faith to engage the word of god obedience to god's word is the only way to commit god's integrity to perform please listen obedience to god's word is the only way to commit god's integrity to perform like we learned from pastor isaac the price listen every time you want to see revival it is a combination of expectation and hunger and repentance these are the factors it will not change desiring revival quoting it will not bring it it takes hunger it takes expectation he said look on us and the bible says the man looked at them expecting to receive something i want to become a great businessman known by all then you must subscribe to the law of diligence diligence he said he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully 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 nobody wins the olympic by mistake it takes intention and discipline this one thing i do he says forgetting the things that are behind i press towards the mark of the high calling in christ hallelujah I'm tired of this level that I am now. How do I move to the next level? You find the answer in Genesis chapter 13. God told Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. Not just where you want to go. From any location you can look up. You may not be able to look far. You may not be able to look left and right. But looking up is a privilege of all men. You can look up from a pit. You can look up from the palace. You can look up from any direction. Upon a mountain in a valley, you still have the privilege of looking up and you will see the same thing hallelujah someone who is living say one kilometer from here may not see this auditorium because it's limited are we together but someone from one kilometer can see something up and you who is here you can see something up someone in a skyscraper can see the same thing someone in a valley can see the same thing so the key to rising is first to look up it says from where thou art lift up your eyes and then look northwards southwards eastwards westward it said for wherever your the, 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 the um as far as your eyes can see that to you it will be given faith 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 in the promises haven't known that he's faithful and true haven't known that God is dependable now my next assignment becomes to explore to have a thorough knowledge a thorough knowledge of what is available for me and then to understand the conditions that are connected to it listen even in our corporate life you only promote people when you train them what is the purpose of training to bring them into a greater consciousness of the more Modus operandi of that company, am I right? To help them understand other products that other people at lower ranks may not even know. You are privy to certain informations and it qualifies you to be promoted. What is the difference between someone who just got a job and a senior executive in that company? Knowledge, 
of what is available knowledge of the conditions and the fortitude the zeal to engage some of the senior executives may still remain in the office where everybody has gone because of their determination to keep the company moving listen let me tell you the truth anybody who is not willing to stay with God and obtain the grace to obtain faith faith from God to engage the Word of God that person will inevitably be disappointed inevitably be disappointed I can have a vision and say pastor I saw that there was a wonderful auditorium I saw a place called the good land that God gave you my vision can be correct God can even show him in a dream are we together but that vision will remain forever and not come to pass because until he gets up and takes a step the Bible says the Lord um, walking with them confirming the word confirming the word to confirm means you take a step and then God confirms are we together now with signs following with signs following with signs following when he saw a man who was born blind watch this the Bible says he took mud and mix it with spit to put it in his eyes and told the blind man find your way to a pool called Salome I don't know whether that is kindness but I know that is faith that you touch a man's eyes and then you make him blind the more but if there was any trace of sight you covered it with mud and said find your way to Salome the man would have been offended and angry with mud drying up in his eyes he would have remained there and said this God is not powerful how about Naaman the captain of the Syrian army the Bible says he was a valiant man in war but he was leprous to cut the long story short by the advice of a slave girl he comes to meet Elisha and Elisha does not even come out to see him he says to go and wash seven times and that was the end of it the power of God has come through his prophet but whether it will happen in the life of Naaman or not I hope you know he was offended he was on his way to go back home and that miracle would have remained there you would be surprised that someone else who ran into that river would have been healed not even knowing why because as the moment he spoke the power started hovering around the location of obedience are we together And eventually he went and dipped himself five times six times and was checking nothing happened even at the sixth time until your obedience is complete and he came out the seventh time and the Bible says his flesh was like that of a baby and he was so he was so impacted by that miracle he returned back to say thank you to Elisha and Elisha said no 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 you go and Gehazi was angry so it tells you that it's not only signs and wonders that were around the prophet all kinds of things were there waiting for who satisfies the condition even trouble has conditions it doesn't come anyhow it's just that ignorance has made us masters of activating the conditions that bring trouble Naaman, the, the possibility of leprosy was always there but Naaman did not fulfill the condition I mean I'm, I'm Gehazi now Gehazi sees the man going and he says no way I can't let this man go like this and then he followed him and said hey Elisha has changed his mind he said you should not just go just give me let me take some I won't take everything you can go with some and Elijah said was not my spirit with you and in a moment that man became leprous that man became what what was wrong with Naaman that meant that whether he understood it or not under a certain condition that leprosy came to him and this man do you notice most times God will heal people and say go and sin no more there was something the Bible may not give us the details of how Naaman became leprous but we see from the life of Gehazi that you can you can receive leprosy the same way you receive wealth you receive the anointing you can fulfill a condition and receive it you can receive trouble like a visitor trouble minding his business you can invite it to your life 
the thing that I feared most has come upon me that your fear can attract something from anywhere to say someone is calling me it says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage no wonder the Bible says finally brethren Philippians 4 verse 8 whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely is that in your Bible it says if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things Philippians 2 and verse 5 it says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus someone say faith one more time say faith obedience that you obey the word of God if God says to give and to increase then from that standpoint of understanding every time you drop a seed you know that you are not just helping a man of God this is not a church donation this is not offering there is a spiritual transaction that is happening and that they who are not of faith will not understand because the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit are we together now yes that someone can drop a seed and with that seed program a climate of favor to wait for him somewhere someone who has no business remembering you is made to remember you because there is a name god is also called the father of spirits every human spirit is under his control and he can manipulate it to work his will that even if it is pharaoh he can give you gift after oppressing you i hope you know the one who gave israel gold was the same person who refused to give them straw don't be surprised that your boss who said by next week I will fire you is the one who said can I send you for training abroad but listen he does not do it he is made to do it your assignment is to know how powerful God is to know the promises that have been left for you and to know how to engage it by faith hallelujah you believe that So God can speak to you and say, go and build a hospital. And you want to collapse at that instruction. You call an architect to calculate something and the, the, the foundation alone will build a house for you. And you say, God, this is not fair. How do you in disrupt my life and disrupt my peace with this kind of instruction? But yours is to obey. Lord, I believe you. I may not understand how you do it. But all I know is that when you speak, it is within your power to make happen. Holy Spirit, guide me on what step to take. And he will say, go and greet that man. And while you are discussing, the man will say, you know for three years, God has been telling me he's going to send somebody to build a hospital and that half of the bill should come from me. You see, you wouldn't tell anybody that, you would not need to tell everybody where the money came from. They would just see supernatural results and say, your faith is working. And they are right. Hallelujah. Many times people see me and say, but Apostle, when you are praying for the sick, is it that you are not afraid of your reputation, especially when it's online? You say, you, I have parents, they are life. I have, you, you think I'm a stupid person who wants to make a fool of myself? No. I told you the spelling of faith yesterday. Let's spell it. R. Excellent students. One more time. That you lay your hands on someone on a wheelchair on crutches and the world is watching you that's why it's not good to collect money from people because at least you are free whatever happens is when you now transact it and it backfires are we together but when the miracle happens at the other side of the testimony you now enjoy the blessings is that true if it be thou bid me come and peter walked i'm sure he was enjoying he turned and told the disciples you can't imagine what it feels like walking on water but it was at the instance of obedience when nations honor you and honor god in your life what they are simply honoring is a test testament of believing in God that a man can believe God unto his excelling a man can believe God unto his rising let me speak over someone's life already in the name of Jesus Christ where you have come for many years you have refused to rise through fear through disobedience I release you go forward now I release you make progress now in the name of Jesus Christ please sit down 
Pastor, there are people who may never build in their whole life because they are waiting until the day they have all the money. They are waiting until the day everything. God gave you favor and they've given you the land and in your visions every night you see a house that is complete. Let me assure you, if he's the God of the Bible, waiting for the complete money will never come. Even if he can, there is something you need to learn. At the end of that building, the first person to be built is you before the structure. So God will design. When you see God working with men, he limits certain things because he wants you to learn him on the way are we together now so you take a step of faith and just when you gather the whole money for zinking god will say go and sow it ah god now i fix the date for the the dedication what kind of embarrassment is this and then while you are talking you say someone will bless you tomorrow add to it and sow everything and then when you are alone he now says, I want to reveal myself to you as Jaira. And you will think you've known him. And all of a sudden, that string of unbelief will cut once and for all. And you say, Lord, even if it's the whole building, I can give it to you. Your fear dies. It is at that point, someone will now come and say, God instructed me to not only help you roof your building but to bless you and to make you a board member of our company for the rest of your life when you are testifying people clap but that was an exploit of faith hebrews 11 it says time will fail me to talk of gideon and jephthah and barak men through faith who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions women received their dead back to life the bible simply calls them elders that they obtained a good report now faith is it says the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtained a good report i remember when the lord spoke to me about moving to abuja i said god you have come again and for three years we're doing our discussions and argument back and forth and i said what is this i was not even sure where I kept verifying I don't know whether it was verification as a result of unbelief or I said are you sure of this oh God let me be sure that it is you hallelujah and then now the trouble of getting an auditorium or getting a place from the visions God was showing me where are you going to God what is all this one and then he stretches you and then he stretches you one time I remember I was praying listen every time you are in doubt start praying you just start praying don't worry about what you are feeling you just begin to pray something happens to you when you begin to generate energy are we together now but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost every time your mind is clouded with doubts and fears and it looks like you are surrounded by impossibilities begin to engage in prayer strategic consistent prayer in the spirit I remember when I began to pray the Lord gave me an instruction and he said to buy to get the map of Abuja the map of Nigeria the map of Africa and the map of the globe these four maps I laid my hands on them and I continue to pray to pray the rest is history and to God be the glory for all that he's doing and for all that he's done can I tell you God has given me an orientation and I do not want to sound proud there is absolutely no I do not believe that there are any limitations in my life the only limitations in my life are number one the voice of God two, the law of process that's it in my world there are no limitations when he gives a matching order it does not matter what I meet in front of me every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome this is a word for someone. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You 
so apostle i want to be healed of this sickness step one is to know the god who brings the healing ah know the god who brings the healing when you are in doubt go and look at his credentials when they want to give you a job or they want to trust you they will say bring your credentials am i right on that and then when they begin to flip through your cv in 1999 he received an award from un in 2000 he received an award from eu who questions that kind of credentials the bible is full of god's credentials you are doubting him watch what he did before the red sea you are doubting him watch what he did in the days of joshua his credentials to know that this God is mighty, to know that this God is almighty, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, mighty God. That when God decides to arise on your case, woe betides the man who stands his way. To the point that he turned a king to become an animal for seven years, to teach him a lesson that there is a God that sits on the circles of the earth. Can I tell you, no man on earth has the power to bully you. Every man was once a baby in the hands of a woman. There was no man in our world today who was born an adult. Every man was a baby. The one who made that baby grow can bring that person down too. Because you see, we live in a world where people have mastered the art of bullying and intimidating others. No. But the people that do know their God, Oh, there's no land for you in Lagos, they say. Forget it. Are you right on that? God is called the God of portions. The Bible says the increase of the earth is for all. That even the, the king is served from that which comes from the field. Apostle, but I'm coming from a background where I've never risen before. Go and read about ordinary men from their lowly estate who were lifted by God. Do you not read about Joseph who was in the pit one moment and exalted another moment? Do you not read of Daniel and the other eunuchs that went in as slaves and then were exalted to become one of the presidents? Go and read about the young girl called Hadassah Esther hiding somewhere in Shushan with no father and through her uncle Mordecai she was exalted and became queen. The credentials of God. Go and read about a whole land that was wrapped up in famine. And by the prophet, he said, by this time tomorrow. And a foolish man came and said, no, even if God opened the windows of heaven, might this thing be? How much do you owe that is giving you sleepless night? Let me tell you, there is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. How much is the pain? The pain that is that is that is all around your life and your body and there are all kinds of medical reports satan comes with his suggestion so this is how you will die so your children will be without a helper hezekiah said i'm not dying i will negotiate my longevity he says prophet i respect you but leave me and god i know you are a vessel let me talk to God himself who owns the heavens and the earth Lord remember how I have walked diligently before you and he negotiated 15 years plus sound health for you are my God you are my God you are my God. Hey, hey. You are my God. Listen to me. The psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. Then he says, Whence cometh my help? Everybody is helped. The question is location. Whence cometh my help? Nobody rises without help. It says, my own help. I can't assume that for everybody. But my help cometh from the Lord, the maker, the maker. Everything you see that was made was made by the maker. It's a name that he's called. He can make men to be powerful. He can make businesses to be great. He can make ministries to rise up great.
listen to me we are going to have some time to pray and i want you to believe shake away unbelief in your heart the lord brought you for this conference to reposition you is there anything that is too hard for me you're not the first to look for a job you're not the first to need healing ladies and gentlemen you're not the first to be confronted with all kinds of situations around you you're not the first to be negatively attended to do i need to ask you to pray or you're already praying do i need to tell you what to pray or anger holy anger should provoke you to begin to pray Hallelujah. Listen. I opened my Bible and I found there written. It said, I will increase your greatness and comfort you round about. When I saw it, I believed it. I believed it. I believed it. When I read and it says, Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. I believed it. I still do believe it. When he said you will call on one person and a nation will respond to you, I believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. God is not a man that he should lie. Shake away unbelief. God is not a man. You are not the first to do ministry. If you are failing, it is not God. Take responsibility. God is not a man. There is an anointing God has shown you. When are you waiting for it to rest on your life? The grace that heals nations. The grace that lifts burdens. Hallelujah. Can I tell you the truth? Hear me. Lagos is waiting for you with all its abundance and blessing but it will take your faith i know that you may know this leader that leader but if you do not know god you are in trouble god uses men but no blessing comes from men it only comes through men if you don't know the one sending them you will be in trouble hallelujah everything god tells me I believe that he will make it happen. Show me a man who has mastered the art of believing God and committing him to obedience. I show you an, a sign and a wonder. A man who God can use to turn a swampy area into the good land. This is a testament of faith. Hallelujah. Maybe I should say this to the glory of God. I remember when God gave an instruction to go and do a conference in the United Kingdom and what I saw in my vision I said God I believe you and I know you are able to do it and then you may have known God gave me an instruction and he said there is something a statement that I want to make that will honor the church no offering no giving no seed whatsoever should be collected and you are going to feed all of the people 2,000 plus workers everybody will be fed and I said Lord I believe you I believe you I'm not saying this to brag my apologies It's one thing to talk about what you don't know anything about it's another thing to come with proof what you are hearing this morning is not a cunningly devised fable we are going to pray and I'm going to declare over your life something must rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ I remember we took the step of faith and then the Lord gave me an instruction he said look for the largest indoor auditorium in the United Kingdom 
what are you saying but I know that when he speaks your assignment is to believe him and find out what you need to do it doesn't matter how many millions of pounds and millions of dollars it will cost he's called the supplier it is not your business it's either you believe him or you don't and God glorified himself in a way that we just leave the glory to him I'm saying that because from today someone will become a sign and a wonder that all the doubts and fears you are saying, oh God, when will this happen? When will I be able to build my house? Shake away unbelief. Lift up your eyes and see the possibilities that come when we believe God. The back end of that miracle is not your responsibility. Yours is to believe him and to engage by faith. Many years ago, the Lord gave me an instruction. And I took a very serious seed. You know how Isaac is. You can give Ishmael in one day. Isaac. And went to Canaan land to go and sow that seed. And I remember when I did what I had to do. I returned. I was going to enter the car and the Lord asked me. He said, place your hand on that ground. And I came out, knelt down, placed my hand in the open in the daytime. And he said, from this day. You have entered the overflow anointing. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen. I do not mean to waste your time. God has designed this conference so that something happens to you. That at the end of this conference, you will be as bold as a lion. You will go back and say, I am tired of marking time at this level. I'm ready to take a giant step of faith for someone you have come here sick and you can if you continue to entertain that sickness I hate to be a bearer of bad news it was because the church was careless when they killed James they kept quiet the Bible says and they proceeded further that is the character of Satan everything you tolerate he will invent another strategy to make it worse when they captured Peter he said no the Bible says, but prayer, Acts 12, 5, but prayer was made of the church by the church unto God for him. And an angel came. The same angels that came were always there when James was dying. But that they, they depend on the obedience of the saints. Can someone cry and say the grace for prompt obedience? Go ahead and pray. Please pray. The grace for prompt obedience. The grace for prompt obedience. The grace for prompt obedience. Engaging the word. The grace for prompt obedience. 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 Hallelujah. John chapter 2 from verse 4. The Bible talks about a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the, a feast is a place of rejoicing. A feast is a place of merriment. You are rejoicing with the people, whether it's an anniversary, a marriage anniversary, a birthday, it's a feast. And the Bible says there was a wedding that was going on there. Can you imagine that during someone's wedding, wine just finishes like that? The embarrassment that was there. And the Bible says they came and met Mary, the mother of Jesus. And she took them to Jesus. Jesus said, my hour has not come. Woman, what do, what do I have to do with you? But then Mary told them something in verse 5. She said, whatsoever he tells you to do, don't just say it, don't just claim it, do it. Do it. Provided it is his word, do it. Hallelujah. Do it. And then.
then notice at the point where their faith came alive Jesus was now ready to give them something to act on he said fill six pots with water and when they had done so he said fetch the water and take the risk of going to the rulers don't taste don't verify be on your way your reputation at stake but if you believe me enough go the Bible says they fetched it do you know what would have happened to them if the rulers tasted and it was water but it is only faith faith in God water he turns into wine he opens the eyes of the blind there's no one like you none like you into the darkness we shine into the darkness we shine and now of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you sing it on to him our god is greater our god is stronger lord you are high Some in power I got, I got. I want you to lay your hands, lay your hands on your body if you are trusting God for healing. I just want to speak over your life. Take away your eyes from that medical report and look unto Jesus. The Bible says they looked unto him and their faces were lightened. Lay your hands there. You can stand in for someone and those who are watching by way of television you can connect right now as I speak I want you to believe but you see just saying amen is not what brings you the healing listen for the instructions that come sometimes he can say stand up pick up your mat and walk away sometimes he can say go to Siloam and wash other times he can say ought not this woman be a daughter of Abraham whom Satan has bound low these 18 years by reason of the covenant I made a promise to Abraham she is a daughter of Abraham it should work for her I want you to believe in the power of Jesus as I pray for you don't tolerate any sickness high blood pressure my own is just a small headache lay your hands on it and drive it as small as it is before it grows to destroy your life some lump somewhere in your body no matter what name it is called the Bible says wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name that at the name of Jesus Christ every knee shall bow of things in heaven in the earth and under the earth and every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father let's pray now father thank you in the name of Jesus I thank you because you are the one who heals you send forth your word and it brings healing it brings deliverance therefore I speak right now that every spirit that is back of any infirmity we curse you right now in Jesus name we curse you right now in Jesus name we curse you right now in Jesus name I decree and declare pain disappear now swelling dissolve now every medical condition it does not matter what the name is in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands upon you these are the hands of Jesus by extension and I bring you healing I bring you healing I bring you healing vitality restoration in the name of Jesus and every long-standing infirmity we curse you right now by the God of heaven we declare that you give way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ listen to me the Bible says and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt it says and by a prophet they were established in the economy of God when he wants to lift men when he wants to restore men it comes at the instance of prophetic declarations that even the blessing is conferred upon men by speaking he blessed them saying saying 
saying I want to use the few minutes that we have standing in faith to speak over someone's life listen the church in Nigeria and the church global is very prophetic and very apostolic and most of us are not uh, we're not strangers as far as the power of prophetic declarations are concerned but because of that most people have become very familiar and so people just lift their hands they say amen but in truth they do not believe what is said they do not even believe that it will come to pass it is only when it touches an area of frustration they shout amen sincerely let me tell you what makes the prophetic word come to pass every time the word of god comes forth listen carefully when the word of god comes forth the dynamics of its manifestation is that the holy spirit listen carefully the holy spirit acts as the spirit of wisdom compelling men compelling situations and circumstances to align in such a way that must make what you have said amen to come to pass so if the prophet says by this time tomorrow the spirit of wisdom begins to hover around Samaria and not finding any available vessels it has to go and make do with lepers the lepers sat down and did not know that there was a prophetic word moving them they just started discussing they were always there the same way someone starts talking and said don't you think we should expand another department in this company they think they are just willing to but a prophetic word had gone forth the bible says the lepers suddenly told themselves why sit we here till we die it says let's get up and go and fall upon our enemies if they defeat us fine if they give us food to eat and as soon as they got up they began to move the bible says god manipulated that sound and what the enemies heard was the sound of chariots and say you see this Samarians have gathered other allies and have come to fight us and they did not have the courage to fight back they ran away and when the lepers got there there was food they ate and ate and said ah we are not fair to ourselves let's go back and report this case how does God change a man's life in 24 hours God decided to use lepers to let you know that once you can act it doesn't matter how weak you are once you can act in obedience so as I'm declaring over your life, don't just say amen. I want you to see what is being said. See it coming to pass in your life. Don't try to calculate how it will happen. You see, you try to do that, you're going to lose out on so many things. If I declare that God should bring you favor, your mind may be thinking of an uncle somewhere. Or your mind may be saying, but you know I'm owing now. I'm owing 100 million, I'm owing 1 billion. That's not what I'm asking you. Do you believe he said alas master for it was borrowed and he said where fell it hallelujah i want to make that declaration and then we did together we'll do the impartation once and for all just a minute or two and we're done because for some of you what you need is a fresh engracing you are in ministry you are in life but you see yesterday's empowerment might not suffice for today's challenges they were filled with the holy ghost in acts chapter 2 in acts chapter 4 they were filled with the holy ghost again grace and peace can be multiplied it should not be at the level it came and remain there can be multiplied favor can be multiplied goodness can be multiplied all by the spirit of god i'm ready to pray now everyone who is weak in the spirit you are so weak because of the situations and circumstances around your life the grace to pray is not even there the grace to press forward is not there i stretch my hands upon you now i declare let this anointing let this grace that will pick you up the bible says and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet receive that grace right now 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 an empowerment upon your spirit man capacity to believe god receive that grace right now receive that grace right now receive that grace right now
now hear me every door that has been closed over your life and your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ the resurrected King I declare over that door be open now 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 be open now, be open now. Everything that has died in your hands or is dying in your hand, we call him who is the resurrection and the life and we declare it comes back to life now. It comes back to life now. Hear me? The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. It always takes a man to help you and usher you to the next level. I don't know which man has been programmed over your destiny in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, receive the gift of man. Receive the gift of men, the gift of strategic helpers in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me declare favor upon your life. Listen, this favor thing is very powerful. It was here in this church I taught about favor. You remember the teaching that there are a threefold expression of favor that if it does not happen in your life it is not favor unusual kindness unusual access unusual acceptance there must be something on your life that makes men to accept you men are biased by default using whatever it is there has to be a grace upon you in the name of Jesus I stand in faith with the angel over this house for someone who has experienced shame and disfavor it looks like everything around you is driving good things from you in Jesus name carry this grace now carry this grace for favor now carry this grace for favor now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ The man of God before me spoke about revival. I just feel a need to pray for people's prayer lives here that has gone down. I understand at the beginning of the year we can pray because usually there are moments of prayer and fasting. But down the line because of the vicissitudes of life, many people have gone cold, gone down, not praying again. They have become excessively philosophical in the name of Jesus upon your prayer altar. Let fresh fire rest upon it now. Upon your prayer altar, let fresh fire rest upon it now. In the name of Jesus. Two more declarations. Listen. It was a revelation God gave me a few years ago that there is something in the spirit called the book of remembrance. Men document the goodness of men and even God documents the goodness of men. That in the final time men will be rewarded according to the things written in that book. The Bible says that night could not a hazard or sleep. Mordecai saved the life of the king but he was not rewarded. He was forgotten. And one night the king could not sleep. I will always want to say that there are people, some of you have participated in the rising of many people, but the reward that follows that sacrifice has not yet come to you. Let me declare over your life that in the name of Jesus Christ, you have been part of the lifting and the success story of many, and yet you have not been rewarded like Mordecai. In the name that is above all names, let the book of remembrance be opened for you. Let the book of remembrance be open for you.
You believe that? God did something very humbling this year. Pastor, I, I always don't like to tell my stories because sometimes people misunderstand it. And then sometimes it's good to not speak more than what is necessary. But sometimes it's just to challenge people's faith. So a group of Muslims came together. And they came together and they came and met me that they wanted to give me a gift. The gift of a property. They said, we're Muslims, but we have been listening to your teaching. And your principles have changed our lives. And we thought as a company, what do we do to this man? And they decided, as first I hesitated, I said, no, let me just pray for you and leave you to go. But then I remember, Gentiles shall come to your light. And kings to the brightness of your rising. And I said, what kind of prayer? They said, we know that if you pray for us, our business and our company will not be, we are not Christians, but we believe in you. Listen, did the Bible not say, then say among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for them. I am leaving you today. Stop looking at this just as a, a paper. When you settle down everything you read and you find, believe it. Believe it. When you find the word of God that's contained in scripture, believe it. And then he turns your life into a sign and a wonder. A sign and a wonder. I didn't know what to tell them. I just told them, I said, all right, God bless you. A woman finished building her house. Beautiful house. Nice duplex in a choice place in the city of Abuja. And as soon as she was done, she just said she's relocating. And she called and said, Apostle, I have something to tell you. I said, what is it? He said, I have a little gift for you. I said, what is that? He said, this is this structure. Here, is, here are the keys. Do whatever you want to do with it. I'm leaving. I said, what, how many houses can you stay in your life? But that is none of the business of the word of God. Once you believe, it will keep performing and performing and performing. I hope you don't take this for pride. I'm just encouraging your faith because it is one thing to talk as a lecturer. It's another thing to impart grace upon you. These are not cunningly devised fables. Hallelujah. It's not all about prosperity and material things. We just use this as an expression to show you the possibilities that God can give you rest. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. During COVID, please give me a minute. During COVID, something very funny happened. I'm sitting one morning and then I get a call. I will not mention the name from one of the African nations. And they say, oh, a prominent man who had passed on to glory. His family had requested to see you. They were trying to split his estate and it was bringing a lot of trouble. And they sat as a family and said, get us Joshua Selman. Let him come and settle the quarrel that is in this family. So the lawyer reaches me and says, I said, it's COVID. They will, I'm not sure they will even stamp the visa. And he laughed. He said, this is so, so family we are talking about. What is the visa? Who are the people who, uh, who work in the embassy? And I was done with the call. I said, ah, this God, ba. This God. I'm saying that because from today, the meaning of all that I've said is from today, whatever it takes for you to be announced in the name of Jesus, may the grace to make it happen rest on you. May the grace to make it happen rest on you. May the grace to make it happen rest on you. May the grace to, happen, to make it happen rest on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in one minute, I'd like us to please pray over the Global Impact Church. You are here. Pray over this commission from the depth of your heart. Pray for this church. Pray for the angel over this house and the wife that in the name of Jesus, may God measure a thousand cubits again. 
we thank God for the mighty things that God is doing through his servant but let's pray that God will spread the impact God will bless and lift this man and lift this ministry the workers and all who are committed to this work go ahead and pray pray from the depth of your heart he said brethren pray for us brethren pray for us in the name of Jesus pray let favor rest upon this church rest upon the man of God rest upon the workers both those who are here and all other expressions across Lagos and across the globe that in the name of Jesus the globe will hear his voice the keeping grace that he is kept his wife kept his family members kept children kept the workers kept prosperity like never before favor like never before influence like never before abundance like never before even by the Spirit of God untimely death pray over the membership of this church nobody will be buried before their time we declare increase everyone in the global impact church walking by faith living by the word men of character men of power men of grace that this will be a place of global impact indeed decree and declare no weapon fashioned against this church fashioned against the membership fashioned against God's servant will prosper as for this church you go from glory to glory invest in one minute as you pray for in Jesus much less name we pray in Jesus much less name we pray Therefore, I admonish you that in addition to all you have received and the many more that are still lined up, make sure you participate fully in the conference all through until the final day. But be sure to put everything you have learned to work. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.